Debugging errors? Why would I need to know about those? Let's see. All right, we find ourselves back in Intelligent once more. And in this modding tip, we're going to be looking at both debugging and how you can actually take a look at some errors. So let's start with some errors. So the most common error is one that actually is going to be highlighted inside of your IDE. So for example, if I pass in the wrong thing right here, right, I'm passing in a string, even though it actually expects an event bus, you can see I have this highlighted in red, the class is highlighted red, and under problems, I'm actually getting a issue here. So this is, I would say, one of the easiest errors to fix, not this particular, but if you actually have something where it says, hey, there's a different requirement, or there's more parameters or something like that, if you actually try to start your game, right, if I try to run client here, we're actually going to immediately going to get, hey, there is an error here that has to be fixed before you can even try to start this craziness. So that is honestly one of the easier things to actually fix. It actually tells us exactly what the issue is, right? If I actually do it like this error, incompatible type, a string cannot be converted into an iEvent bus, and it actually points to the exact location where this issue occurs, modblocks.register, and actually points to exactly right here. So this is why this doesn't work. Now, if we then instead pass in the mod event bus, then the error goes away. And now we would be able to actually start our project. Right, this is one of the easy errors that might occur, but there might also be something like a null exception, right? So if you pass in a null over here, right, which in this case, it actually doesn't care it's not going to mark this as an issue. If I actually run this, then what we should be able to see at some point is we're going to get a null exception. Now, this could be a null exception. There's all kinds of exceptions. So you can see, there you go, Java lang null pointer exception cannot invoke a certain method here when the bus is null. Right, there you go. So now we're actually getting an error, error loading mods, and then you have the error right here, right? So you, you should get the error right here. You also can click on this run client and then you should see even more. So you can actually see the actual line where this happens, tutorial mode line 26. And you can see, oh, indeed, this is in class tutorial mode line 26. Fairly interesting. And then what we can also do is always open the latest dot log. And then here we will also find this. So we can also find this tutorial mode Java 26. So you can see Basically everywhere it's yelling at us that this null is the issue. So we're just going to say once again, mod event bus and there we go. So those are probably two of the errors that are going to come up most often. You know, null exception is just a thing that sometimes happens because when you maybe register things out of order, things like that happens all the time. But then the question is, okay, what about debugging, right? Why is debugging so interesting? Why would that be a thing? Well, let's actually take a look at our eight ball item over here. And what I actually want to do is I want to take a look at, you know, oh, I, I'm not sure, you know, this craziness, how does this work? How does this happen? You know, I actually wanted to sort of like, if only I could step through this like line by line, you actually can. So what you do is you click right to the number of the line and you, then you can see we're adding this red dot over here. This is what's called a breakpoint. And if we start this in debug mode, so there's going to be this little bug over here. If we actually start this in debug mode, then you can see a different type of window down here will open. And then what happens is that when this line is called, the entire program is going to stop. So everything is going to stop. Nothing else is going to execute. And you can actually see, you can step into every different type of method. You can look at every type of parameter, variable, what they what they contain, what there's in there, all of that you can actually look at. Now, the debug mode actually takes a little more processing power. So that definitely is the case. So keep that in mind. But let's just see. So Minecraft here will start. Everything is going to be fine. So let's just go into the world and nothing should happen just yet because this only happens. The use method is only called when we right click with an eight ball item. So let's just go into the world. See, so for, for now, once again, nothing should happen. But as soon as I right click with this eight ball, you're going to see that the program will basically not respond anymore. So if I right click, you can see all of a sudden everything is frozen. And if I actually click on Minecraft over here, right, you can see I, I can't do anything I'm not responding anymore, because it literally holds the entire program, like everything is now shut down, so to speak. But no worries, this is absolutely normal. You can now see this line is highlighted. And you can actually see some additional information here. So if I go in, you can see that the hand here is a main hand, you can see the server player and all of its constituent fields. Everything here is available that you can now see. So this might be completely overwhelming, which is absolutely fine. Don't worry about this. But the great thing about this is that you can clearly see every single last thing. So you can see the player. You can also see this if I, if I am not mistaken. So if I, I should be able to yeah, click on this and then you can see, well, this is the eight ball item. And we can also see the 20. Now, what we can do is, for example, 
there's some different things that we can do. We can step over, we can step into, we can force step into, and then we can also step out. So if we, for example, press F7 or step into, then we're going to step into the add cooldown method. So let's just do this. And now we're actually debugging Minecraft source code. So we can actually take a look at what does this even do? So this calls the put method on the this.cooldowns. So that we can actually go up. This.cooldowns is just a map from item to item cooldowns, cooldown instance. Right, so this is very interesting indeed, right? So this is just a map from item to item cooldown instances, and we're basically just going to add a new cooldown instance to this. Fascinating stuff. We would have never guessed that if we wouldn't have actually gone into it. Now let's just step out of it again, and you can see we're now past this line at this line, and if we were to step over, we're actually going to get every single line that is then called. You can see here, we're now in the server player game mode. So we're going very, very deep into the actual code of this, which we actually don't need. So if we're done debugging, what we can do is we can just resume program over here. And then we then open Minecraft again. You can see we're back here and everything is working again. So this can be really great for basically checking every single line if you're like, I don't understand why this doesn't work. So then debugging can really help you along. Right, and this is already it for this particular modding tip. We're going to look at some other cool modding tips in the future as well. But for the time being, this would be it. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And I'll see you all in the next video. So, yeah.